So, Candy Cars, episode one. Here we go. Uh, let's say who we are. We have Mike Day. Yes. Will, I can't pronounce your last name. I'm w. not going to try. Yeah, Will W. No. <laughs> and Kevin Ferrari. Ferrero. Ferrari. Kyle. 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 Kevin. Whatever you want. <laughs> he did call him Kyle earlier. <laughs> I mumbled. I meant. We yeah. didn't know if we were trying to come up with uh, podcast alter egos here or what. Well, not now. Yeah, no, they know. <laughs> now they know. So how about just real quick, tell us uh, what you do here and your history. How long you worked here, what you do, why you're into cars. Uh, whoever wants to go first. On the spot. I guess I'll start because <laughs> right. I've been you're here the, the longest. Yeah, yeah right. I guess that's true. Go chronological order. Here. Well, I'm Kevin, not Kyle. And... <laughs> I am a design, well, we're all design engineers at ECS here. Um, I've been working here for almost five years as a design engineer, and I've been specifically working on Audis. Um, I used to be a big Audi guy. I've kind of transitioned into BMWs now, but uh, I don't know. I like driving mostly, so I build stuff to drive. Will? Design and driven. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I'm Will, and you know, like I said, this is we're going kind of chronological here. And the three of us, we all kind of came in pretty close together, time-wise. Uh, you know, we were all within what, like a year, within no, a couple months of that, each other, really, say, like four, yeah. four months or something like that. Well, probably started in me and you were within a year, <clears throat> so. Yeah, so. So uh, I am a Volkswagen engineer here at ECS. Um, so I think it's kind of nice. We're all kind of touching on each of the our main brands. Uh, but again, before I came here, I wasn't really into any of the Euro stuff, to be honest. <laughs> uh, I was, you know, I had a couple Mazdas, wasn't really into Mazdas. I just wound up with a couple and, you know, got into that and, uh, you know, got here and wasn't really into front wheel drive. So I never really got into owning a Volkswagen myself. So again, down with the BMWs, but, uh, yeah. That's me. And I'm Mike, I've been here about a little over four years or about four years um i'm the bmw engineer or one of the bmw engineers here but in this room i am the bmw guy um officially officially i've had bmws for a long time so my second car so like 2006 or so and had a bunch of them i don't know basically anything with an engine i like to play with so just try to be enthusiastic about anything you can rev up and drive around so I think it's a fair assumption to say that we're that's, all into yeah. weird things. Yeah, if it's abnormal, <laughs> we're all into it. And that's <laughs> definitely been a plague around the office that's followed each of our interests. But. So you guys are mostly known for Winter Beater Series. Um, tell us how that came about, your car that you chose, um, anything about it, the behind the scenes? I think... I mean, I would venture to say it all kind of started with, you know, our unfortunate access to Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace and sharing a common chat group. So, you know, you know, common practice is to basically browse around, see what's out there, what's cheap. And what's weird. What's weird, yeah. So Weird and cheap, uh, yeah. Any, if, if we even think that Mike ha might have an extra $5, you know, we're sending him links to, to stuff that think he can or cannot afford or if you don't so, have an extra or, or maybe you don't have five dollars but yeah. something cool and weird so we're, we're you know passing around these links to just stuff anything it could be cars trucks dirt bikes quads unicycles on the helixes <laughs> yeah we'll get into those at a different yeah. part but yeah winter beater this is one of those things around yeah. the office with a bunch of car guys that was like yeah we should buy a bunch of cheap shitty cars mm -hmm. and drive them through the winter and see what happens so that's all it was like minimal plan there it's like yeah we'll well, yeah i mean we were gonna kind of just do it anyways and then it right. was like well if we're gonna do it we should probably film it <laughs> right that, it'd be interesting to more than just us yeah yeah we're you gonna know, do it get but. ecs involved a little bit hopefully they can back us a little bit more you know we don't have to be laying on our backs in a cold salty driveway fixing this stuff yeah that also kind of drove the euro car theme here so mm -hmm. right. we stuck with audi bmw Mercedes. We didn't end up with a Volkswagen because <laughs> I don't know. No one wanted great. a front wheel drive in the snow for winter. Right. Yeah. It, although it, people think it's good. I mean, it is good. It's boring. They, it's, it's not bo good. It's boring. It's not good. But it's, for the vast majority of people, <laughs> front wheel drive is probably the safer bet. 
right? No, because like and, well, no, no, no. Part, it is, it is. But we don't. We're not about safety. We're not about safety, but like the the chance of understeering. Like you have that too much is going weird. on. That it's, is weird. That's not safe for people. I don't like. Well, that. I get for that they're that, not near the limit, but like in the chance that you are, you're fucked. For people that <laughs> don't understand car control, yes, yeah. that that can be that's uh, bad news. Right. A lot of people don't know what to do when the back end comes right. around on them. So, I mean, and let's be real. I mean, the, the best part about winter and snow, hopefully, is just getting out there and having fun. So powdered horsepower. Yeah. So doesn't matter what it is. It suddenly has plenty of power in <laughs> slow motion. That's the best. So tell us what car you bought and why you bought that car. I like rally stuff, and I'm comfortable with rear-wheel drive things. So I was trying to find anything rear-wheel drive that I hadn't owned before, and somehow decided a 944 was the way to go. So I was hunting for a cheap, shitty one of those, and finally found the $500 one I wound up grabbing. But there was not much method behind it. Do you remember, like, so the 944, though, that was just a favorable body style. You knew yeah. You liked it. And then. Cosmetically, just... I like the sort of box flare look. Mm -hmm. And it's, like, old enough for me to like it because I don't really like new things. New things suck. And, yeah. We also had a fairly strict budget at the time of $1,500. Well, right? well I, that was a self-imposed budget, really. I mean, we, we bought the cars. Right. It was a requirement at first. Then people spent a little bit more money by accident, <laughs> and then it became no longer was a requirement. But who was right. that? Zach? Just people who bought. the. Uh, we, we talked about this originally, where it was supposed to be $1,500 all in. Mm. Car, whatever yeah, you had to do. that was one of the things we were throwing And around. all the maintenance or repairs, right? I, right? I don't know if we included maintenance as much as modifications. So. Right. Anything you wanted to spend money on, it had to stay under $1,500. $1, Getting it running, that didn't really count. Um, but we pretty quickly moved away from that when you know, people bought $1,500 cars. Yeah, so, and the other thing is we're trying to figure out what the winter beater thing was. It was originally going to be like a winter beater challenge, and some of it sort of named that way, but there was no real challenge other than trying to drive There were some thing. challenges. The challenges are you driving a shitty car through the winter. Right. The challenges were like, excuses to go just have fun. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. But like, it, we weren't. We decided shortly after, like, yeah, we're not tallying stuff up here. Oh, that's right. Only depressing. Well, what, basically, what I'm getting at here is fifteen hundred dollars had a factor in how you chose the right. vehicle. Yeah. Okay, so you chose the nine four four. What about this nine four four made you purchase it? How'd you find it? And why? I was hunting for a while. None of them were cheap enough for me to be interested in. For some reason, people wanted you know twelve hundred bucks for things that sort of ran and this one didn't run but was significantly cheaper that's a box checked right there though because right. at the end of the day I'd rather it not nothing run. stays stock <laughs> yeah so i'm gonna throw away most of it anyway so i don't really care yeah. you'd say, rather it not run when you right. buy it yeah i'd you rather it not that, if that gets if it's cheaper, cheaper for sure yeah you save yeah. a bunch of money. whatever it takes to make it cheaper sure mm -hmm. so sure. no title you know not running hasn't run in a long time perfect those are all boxes checked for yeah sure. exactly okay so will what'd you buy uh, so this is kind of also a victim of circumstance, uh, and it happened just just before we started talking about the winter beater stuff. But uh, Mike had a buddy back home. Um, yeah. I have a buddy Jake is a shop I used to work at back home in Rhode Island. Um, they had two shout out, yeah, the Durham Motors back in Providence. Um, they had two E39s come in. The first one, like, just he let me know that there was one. And then, like, the next week when I was like, yeah, I'll grab that, another one popped up. And I was like, hey, Will, do you want this other crappy yeah, E39? Yeah, because I, I said I would go. I was, yeah. He was like, hey, I was thinking about going back home to get this E39. And I'm like, oh, what the hell? Yeah, I'll go for a little road trip. We're going to fly out and drive it back. I was like, sounds like a blast, you know? So yeah. So I said I was going anyways. And then he called within the next week and said he got another one. And I'm like, well, I mean, are we talking in the same price range here? Because what yours was six hundred bucks. Yeah. Uh, manual needed a clutch. Yep. I think that was really the only issue with it. Just needed yeah, a clutch. up front. Yeah. There was you know a couple other minor things that maybe we weren't aware of, but it's fine. That's how it goes. Um, and then yeah, they said they had another one come in. This one was a touring. It was a five forty, uh, but that unfortunately meant that it was automatic. But regardless, one of like seven hundred bucks for this one. Just what he was into it. And I'm like, well, hundred percent down. So. Bought that and sounded like the perfect candidate for the, uh, the winter beater situation. So got the homie hookup on it for sure. But I was I'm obviously very down with it because I've come to uh, 
<laughs> be very fond of the car. I've kept that and listed other vehicles for sale since then. So <laughs> that's worked out really well for you. It, for it really has. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and that was running when you found it. That was that was I think probably had even less issues. I mean, the thing oh, was yeah. good to go. It had it needed a driver window regulator. It's worth significantly more than you paid for it. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it had some miles on it. I think it had two two hundred twelve thousand on it. And you know, M sixty twos they have timing chain issues that probably scared somebody off because they got a quote at a dealership for like you know 2500 bucks or something like that so um i drove it like that for a very long time without addressing those major issues and it was fine but you know i don't know there was there was probably a little bit of luck at play there too but regardless i signed up to buy that thing sight unseen i don't i think we had one picture of the outside of the car oh, shitty picture and yeah, a bad I picture at that. yelling Potato at jake phone. about that yeah like, and, come on uh, whatever yeah. but i was but I, you needed my commitment. I was like, yep, let's go. So, and so it was. Kev? I probably made the worst choice. <laughs> <laughs> some would say, some people would also say I probably made the best choice. I mean, it was the coolest car, <clears throat> but the biggest pile. It's up to yeah, it's debate, right. I guess. So the 1989 Audi 200, um, the first time I actually went to go look at the car, it was down in Columbus, so it was about a two hour drive. Uh, went down there. The guy was just a mess. Everything was all over the place. He couldn't get it started. It wouldn't crank right. Nothing was working good. There was trash all over the place. You popping the hood was a fiasco on that thing. But yeah, it had a, well, actually, it, it retained it was the a the coat hanger with a piece of wire tied to it to uh, actuate the the latches <clears> on the hood. I'm sure that was a good sign when you showed up. <laughs> You're like, yeah, and that and the fact that it had a screwdriver to... Did it even have a, No, it had a switch. It was an on-off switch to turn the car on, and then it had a, a, a push-button start to crank it. And I'm, I'm just blown away by how sketchy this thing is. But either way, the first time I went down there and saw it, I was like, oh, geez, this is this is bad. I'm not going to... What, Columbus, like an hour and a half or so? Yeah, about two hours. Two hours. But, I mean, honestly, how many times have you gone to look at something and you end up turning it down. At least for us, when we're looking for things that are cheap and that are fixable, most of the time, yeah. I pick it up. Yep. I, yeah, it's rare that I, I walk away. This one I walked away from. Unless we're like within like a 20 minute radius, you go with full intent of purchasing. Yeah. So then I guess it was mostly, well, everyone kind of just pushed on me a little bit more and they're like, <laughs> come on, just go get it and it'll be fine. We'll, <laughs> we'll fix it. Yeah. You'd be all right. And uh, so then we went down there with a trailer and got it. So I saved a couple hundred bucks. Originally, we had settled at like 1100 before I went down there. So that was the price I was going to pay, assuming it would run and actually drive and stop. So we took it for a test drive. It was absolutely awful. It had the worst boost leaks ever. So it was running like crap. It had, well, actually, when we came back, there's brake pad on the ground. Uh, <laughs> so you parked like, it and it was in the wheel. Yeah, yeah. it's like yeah, one on the ground next caliber. to it. Yeah. Um, so the brakes barely worked. Uh, basically, this guy described this thing as running and driving and requiring almost no maintenance, but it was the exact opposite of that. And it's that was quality also that right there. <sighs> Some people just don't don't get it. That mm -hmm. high quality picture and like vacuuming your interior at least a little oh bit my God. makes a difference that was that was a detailing regimen that thing got put through huh that yeah. interior was rough yes everything was. i rough. mean it wasn't actually that bad it was just dirty like really dirty it's filthy all over <laughs> it had some sports seats it cleaned in up it nice though it, it cleaned up all right yeah it, after a, many hours of carpet cleaning and uh, brushing and whatever i could do to make it not disgusting to drive in um it wasn't that bad but again right off the bat it was maintenance 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 i had to replace parts that are very expensive you can't get anymore for example the the throttle body boot on those cars isn't just a you know an intercooler to throttle body it's not just a circle to a circle it's a circle to a teardrop shape because of the idle valve or whatever it is on the on the throttle body so it was either by the hundred and something dollar silicone some uh like some other aftermarket companies making them Barely any of them, actually. Uh, or it was just buy another OEM piece for like 75 bucks. So I started adding up real quick between everything I needed to get it running, and it, it still took a while to get it functioning at all. It was 
<laughs> the long cranks at the, at the beginning didn't really know what was going oh, on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The oh, gas tank was rusted at the scene. That seams, was probably so... my favorite part of the Winter Beater intro video. Yeah. Was that was just like so accurate. Like that was not staged or whatever. We were all there filming. We did our own little segment. And there goes yeah. Kevin. We we're like, oh, yeah. Okay. After we wrap up our little segments, we're going to go off and drive around the building or whatever. And so like, yeah, we're going to try and keep a tight little line, drive around the building. We all go and here's Kevin last and he's still there trying to crank the car. And that was like 100% legit. <laughs> that was probably the third time I had driven the car anywhere, really. Um, and it's just a, a full mess of figuring stuff out. The first time I went to go put gas in it, it started leaking out the tank. <laughs> yeah. So we I discovered could, the tank was rusted at the seam and leaking. Yeah, so you couldn't put more than a half a tank in it. That meant I had to either find a tank or put a fuel cell in it. Well, guess what's cheaper? eBay fuel cell, aftermarket pump this and that the other thing then i learned a whole bunch of things about the cis system mm -hmm. that wasn't something i uh was very experienced with but it's an odd stage at the, of at the end of everything injection. by the time we got done with filming everything the car ran pretty good it we put good. on the dyno it made 180 horsepower and 230, 230 foot pounds of torque. torque yeah i still kind of wanted you to rerun that i wasn't very confident in those results yeah, we never we never posted that video, did we? That was never. No, no. no. Yeah, so we, we dynoed the whole all of them. on dyno. Yeah. yeah, and then the first time through, we dynoed a couple cars, and like we put my car on it, it did like two hundred horse. I'm like, no, yeah, that's, that's not right. No way. And this is after dynoing like two other cars. They're like, eh, it's yeah, reasonable yeah, yeah, maybe. That was after probably after Kevin. And then it turned out like out. the software when it crashed defaulted into like all wheel drive mode and didn't tell you. So it still said it was in two wheel drive mode, but like the math was in two wheel, two wheel drive mode, but then it gave you this multiplier, this like compensation right. for like all wheel drive car. And right. Like, oh, and there's no way yours is off by that big of a difference. So right. it was probably but, accurate, but yeah, I, I think it was accurate after, you know, seeing, you know, know, every, well, every time <laughs> you buy a car, you, it did feel every bit of that much power. I right. will admit that. It felt right. pretty good. It felt and good. every time you, you know, buy a new type of car or something you haven't been involved before, you go and you go on the Facebook groups and you go on the forums and you kind of poke around to see where everyone else is at, how people fix common problems, things like that. And I posted up there. It's like, oh, yeah, you know, the only thing, the only gauge that worked on the dash as far as like the center LED uh, LCD cluster thing was the boost gauge. So that gave me an idea of how much boost it was running. And it actually seemed to be accurate. Well, yeah, it seemed to be. Yeah. So. Based on that number and the, the horsepower that we came out with, it seemed like it had some kind of chip, even though I wasn't able to find said chip. But, you know, that's back in the old 80s technology of modifying ECUs to, to make more boosts. So, who knows? So, you guys did some challenges. One was you went to the Tail of the Dragon. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about that. That was our, the final. That was the, the Winter finale. Beater yeah. trips. And uh, we're like, so honestly, Winter Beater went way smoother than expected. I mean, we thought we bought shitty enough things to make things fail, bad things happen, and create content that way. We thought we were going to be like on the side of the road and filming this and that, just being in miserable circumstances, you know, cold weather and all that. And we had a relatively mild winter overall. And for the most part, like any failures, any breakdowns, that episode whatever, was the only failure. We're pretty minor. We had. So yeah, so we're like, okay, we need to like, we need to step the step our game up. And other, it was other than tires. Yeah, it was yeah. the end of March yeah. at that point, and winter was still kind of rolling. Right. And we're like, all right, we need to go on like a trip. Like we need to go far. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, what a, a better place to go than yeah, like one of the United States best driving roads. So we kind of said, yeah, let's let's go to the Tail the Dragon. Right. And then that day, we're leaving the next oh, morning. Yeah. <laughs> the so lunch, the prior yeah, day. Zach and I take it to lunch Thursday, and then there's a jump on one of the local back roads. We hit the jump. Closed roads. Closed roads. Professional driver. Yeah. Didn't yeah. get yelled at by a lady in her driveway. And then when I landed, like, so the, the 944s have, like, a rubber clutch hub thing. Instead of sp a sprung clutch hub, it's rubber. And they come unbonded over the course of 30 years and just clunk the whole time and it did that the entire time i owned it but that day at that moment was when there's like little nubs in there to make it so you can still move the car around i sheared those off once they landed the jump because it was still wide open landing and then we get to the bottom of the hill and couldn't drive at all and we're leaving the next morning to go down to the tail of the dragon I'm like shit so 
we got Matt to flat tow the car back a couple miles and then blew the trans out. The uh, blew the trans tube. out. Yeah, we pulled the, the trans came out fast. It's like 40 minutes. Like, too fast. Yeah, very fast. And the torque tube came out. Yeah. And then the bell housing was the big issue that we caused. I was trying to remove that and I forgot about the crank sensors on top. And I smashed both of those. So we pulled it apart. I welded up the clutch hub. Even though the clutch disc was super worn, the throttle bearing made noise the whole yeah, time I it had worked. it. It worked. Yeah, slammed it back so. together, and then the car wouldn't start because no one stocks 944 crank sensors. So we decided to trailer down to the tail of the dragon. Oh, the, the morning after the morning we decided, after we decided, decided to trailer it. To trailer it. It was up for a lot of debate if we were going to take your car or, or just leave it here. We spent right. a lot of time trying to see if there was a way to either trick the car into thinking right. that it had crank sensors switching them because we're like well why yeah. does it need two yeah that's you know, the old school redundant need... stuff where it had like an, a crank rpm signal for no reason and then an actual crank sensor I'm like, why the heck does this need both we're right. gonna be able to tell it that one of them's the other and just get it okay because one of them was really smashed and the other was like mm, passable yeah 80s technology defeated yeah again did we end up replacing both of them yes yeah. well yeah because i mean if you're gonna have them overnighted I didn't, shipped I, down to North Carolina you know, or whatever, you're going to get both. Right. You, you never know what who has what in stock and who no, can get it you there. Who, well, they're two we identical the, sensors, too. They are the, the same. Trouble. But the place you get it from, maybe they only have right. one of them and they exactly. can only get you there. So yeah. that, was a, that was a fun time. Yeah. It worked so, out. Yeah. All yeah, hands on deck, pulling it apart, putting it back together. We're at the straight. Airbnb, and we to get to the place we stayed at was – you kind of like drive into this little community and then it turns into a dirt driveway like immediately and it's super tight and uphill and there's gravel and tree roots and so we're just up there we're like how are they gonna deliver there's no way a delivery truck's gonna get up this driveway turn around and so basically the rest of us that had functioning cars we drove down somehow made it without any issues other than will's tires um Went to the tail of the dragon, left Mike to hang out so we could go film stuff, and he could wait for the delivery driver that may or may not come up the driveway. We, at some we were point. concerned about them actually leaving a package, so we're right. Like, and they like, also did. That's like a an area of no service whatsoever. So with everyone in the house that we we're renting, Wi-Fi didn't work. When you're by yourself, Wi-Fi sort of worked. Yeah. That so. and I mean that was our our main method of communication throughout kind of the whole series was the walking talkies and we're like so we weren't even going to be able to communicate with you when you were there either fixing the car or not fixing the car or whatever and we're like all right i guess whatever if mike gets into range we'll get him on yeah. the walkie talkie or something all so, north carolina is yeah. not the pinnacle of high yeah. population and cell service so so it was a success though you got it fixed i did get it fixed yeah and then i showed up i, I didn't know where anyone was. They texted him, but obviously you're not going to get a response. So I just kind of Googled where it was. It was following the maps. And then I pull up to the entrance of the Tale of the Dragon, where the little like uh, gift shop thing is. Mm-hmm. And sure enough, everyone's crossing the street. Like, they just got there. I'm like, <laughs> oh, no kidding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we had a couple pit stops on the way, I think, getting gas and filming, you know, little B-roll stuff on the way. So we obviously that was burned, a shot. Um, burned a lot of time. I was bummed that we missed, but there was no way to, like, tell you that I was coming. So Oh, my God. If that would have been cameras so cameras rolling good, just as you, like, pulled up, because we were all, like, literally jumping for joy. We were like, oh, holy shit, <laughs> he's here. <laughs> so, yeah, no, that was that was really cool. Um, and how they perform on the Tale of the Dragon. Oh, mine was awful. Everything was awful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, overall. Audi, uh, Audi managed to vapor lock or something when we we probably had gone down the dragon twice at this point mm-hmm. and slowly sitting at the yeah not fast not not moving a lot of air um, just constant accelerate brake accelerate brake we're mostly trying to film with the truck and mm-hmm. having cool Steve in the back and some sweet shots and stopped at the little local shop down at the bottom there again and decided to take one more run I'm going up the hill right from the shop not very far at all i think i made it like 300 400 feet maybe and the uh the audi starts cutting out which it's absolutely terrifying because you're at, on a very tight two-lane road where people are kind of ribbing too. people are driving fast <laughs> there's like the edge of the road drops off and one side is one th- yeah, yeah one side of the road is a wall mm-hmm. of rock and the other side is just a, a cliff down to the ravine or whatever uh, and i had to 
turn around basically with no power people getting out jumping out to push to get me out of the way so someone didn't come around the corner and smash into me yeah we were a little nervous that while you were turning around literally perpendicular with the road somebody's going to come ripping around that corner so that was a little nerve-wracking but there we are with our junk cars like <laughs> breaking down in the middle <laughs> people are probably mad i don't know um but yeah it, that turned out to not be a huge issue we like emergency tried to source a fuel pump just like we were sourcing these crank sensors for mike yeah and it up uh, on instagram facebook everything i was like this thing's yeah. cooked it's done there's no way this fuel pump's gonna work anymore and then fired it up after it sat for like 30 minutes while we were looking around and it was fine it was didn't it was sound cool, great cooled down and it was it worked did not sound good at all but it had been like that for a while and, and really the reason it hadn't sounded good up to that point was because of the the foam in the ebay fuel cell yeah <laughs> you know there's a lot of a lot of people have noted this on the internet before where the foam kind of breaks down in these cheap fuel cells you buy. i think i paid like 80 bucks for a 16 gallon supposedly a fuel cell yeah Shoot. And I was like, oh, I'll probably keep the uh, the foam in there and see if it kind of falls apart. If it starts falling apart, I'll pull it out, and then we'll try to save the fuel pump. But I didn't see any signs of the fu- the, the foam breaking down at all at yeah, any I, point. I know you checked. I mean, we mentioned that before, too. We're like, oh, I don't know about that foam. Like, I've heard right. it's hit or miss. And yeah. you're like, oh, I checked. It's all uh, so still I'm like, in oh, there. One I must piece. have gotten a hit. That's great. But after pulling the lines on the fuel pump, found out that it's the little teeny tiny parts of the foam that that break down and pretty much just clog the entire inlet of the, the fuel pump so that was that i found that before the tail of the dragon but and i you know took it out took all the foam out cleared the pump of whatever was in there and decided that it would probably make noise but it'd be okay and it was not and it continued to make noise but it got me home yeah so yeah. so uh for our listeners, I'm not an engineer. I am just a media guy. I replaced Cool Steve. Um, tell me why there's foam in a fuel cell. Is it for filtration? No, it's for sloshing around. So, there's, you know, you have a big square fuel cell. You go around a corner, all the fuel goes to one corner, and you're picking up fuel from the center. So it starves, and then it dies on its face, and then your car's not running. And Once you stop being around a corner, it'll figure it out. And usually start running again but for what it's, it's worth it did that with and without the fuel the, the foam that's in there. <laughs> that's what the foam's intended to do right. is to prevent the slosh but it's poorly but designed. yeah it doesn't work great cheap yeah. very cheap ebay stuff so. so okay yeah my favorite is when we were looking up like uh i guess common fixes for the foam and, and wiffle balls yeah. i really wanted to fill somebody's fuel cell with the wiffle balls. i still i've been looking into it wiffle balls are they're not expensive cheap. man yeah. good wiffle balls like because yeah. you can't get the cheap ones because they're made out of a plastic that actually dissolves right and fuel because i have this issue with the drift car right now it's a non-baffled fuel cell if it's below half a tank it dies flat on its face so i looked priced it out it's like 350 bucks on wiffle balls <laughs> I'm like what <laughs> no that's, i'm not doing that that's excessive <laughs> But the foam is much more expensive. A yes. really good, qual- like high quality of that specific density. Especially the ethanol safe, safe stuff yeah. nowadays. Is, Stupid That expensive. foam is a lot more expensive. Yeah. So. so before that, you guys went up to Snowdrift in Michigan? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, how was that? Cold. It was very cold. So uh, we went again this year. And now I think we're realizing that the first time we went was exceptionally cold for when we went. Because it was like that was minus not 15 the norm the whole time, and it was awful. I mean, none of us like, had been to northern Michigan before, yeah, and so, so we just thought, like, wow, it's just stupid cold up here. It's just how it is. This is how it way. is. And this but, year was like, you know, 28 the whole time. Yeah, oh, it was great. really it was really good this Much year. Better. But the trip itself, again, I actually, I should say that, there, I mean, there was a fail, fair number of issues on that trip as well, mainly for Zach. Zach had Shout out a bad time with media? that one because, well, not on the way there. Oh, I guess no. He did, on the way there. <laughs> yeah, he had the wheel <laughs> the issue. The leaky tire. Well, he had a cracked wheel which you... that I welded, but it still leaked. And then, so we're filling that every hour. With, mm. was it, it was every, hit or miss. I, th- like I think it was less than every hour. That was bad. But towards the end, we were just either that or he stopped filling it. Because like the, the second half of the trip, I feel like we didn't bother. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The first half of the trip, we cared a bunch. The second yeah, half, so, didn't. so and Zach had, had that issue on the way up. He had that little teeny tiny cigarette lighter air oh, pump that took half an hour to gain five thing. psi. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, I love me some Harbor Freight tools, but that one was that was not yeah, good. That's not it. Yeah, that's not. No air compressors. I, he, his doors are the latches are frozen, so yeah. when we were leaving, he couldn't close the door. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then while we were up there, he lost the blower motor, right. which meant no. he had no heat all the way back. <laughs> and yeah. no joke, I mean, yeah. actual temperature while we were up there. No I wind think chills. We saw negative 10, 15 over yeah, negative something 15 like that. for sure. I thought we saw negative 20 one night. I'm sure we did, but, but insane. I've never experienced that cold in my life. That was crazy. Uh, but yeah, poor Zach. You know, the way back, I mean, I think the rest of us didn't really have any issues. Like, we were worried about cold starting and everything. My but... issue on the way back was my heat was stuck on. <clears throat> so I just felt like a dick the whole Yeah, time. but you can't complain about that. <laughs> I can't <laughs> complain about that. The or night Zach's before dying. we left, I had ordered a starter for the Audi because <laughs> yeah. I it wasn't. And you were particularly it, mad at shipping services that day, weren't you? Yeah, I paid overnight shipping on the starter, and then it didn't show up the entire day that it was supposed to show up. So then the next morning... I'm sitting there like, oh, hope this works in, you know, negative 20 degrees because it had done a few things where it just wouldn't turn over anymore. It just would click and that was it. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what actually fixed it, if anything fixed it, but it seemed fine after that. And starting in the morning, negative 20 degrees, I spent a good half hour cranking, just Mm -hmm. getting the thing to go. Yeah, but that battery was a ripper. It, It was. That didn't care. Yeah. But, uh. Yeah, no, aside from that, you know, poor Zach was cold the whole way back, but otherwise a really good trip. We were kind of miserable, but it was just so cold. But we decided to give it another shot this year. We went back kind of just on our own just to see what it was all about, hopefully go a little more prepared, right. you know, in both the warmliness and, you know, <laughs> supplies and, and right. things. Uh, and Which it was, two it was, of the winter beaters made it back again. That's true. Yeah, we took the Porsche and the 540 back up. No problems. So, which, speaking of, I mean, same clutch. It's, it's still going. <laughs> well. I mean, not anymore. It, but yeah. then it was. But then it was still going. Yeah. Made it to Michigan twice on. Uh, I welded together. It, it, there's, well, it wasn't welded then. That's but it, it wasn't was welded. But the, smoked, the, the, the uh, pressure plate is touching the rivets. The brass <laughs> rivets are nice and shiny where they're rubbing yeah, instead that, of just That thing was material. smoked when we had to weld it, and it lasted almost a year. Yeah. Right. And it's that. not like I've been any easier on it because it's no. smoked. Right. So now it's the throw bearing, which made noise since the day I bought it. And uh, it finally has been the dust. It's really, really bad now. <laughs> so I parked it. Stage rally events are good. And northern Michigan in the middle of winter is pretty good on the back roads if you yeah. are into sliding around and having no traffic at all. Right. Um, so we spent a lot of time just driving around. We didn't plan very well the first time for the actual rally itself and watching because you kind of have to, you really have to have a good plan about where you're going to go, what time cars are going to be there, and where you're going to go after that. You got to worry about parking. There's a whole bunch of people. Yeah, if you don't get there real early, you got to walk right. a while. But uh, yeah, because I mean, you're, you're in the middle of, uh, is it National Forest up there or is it a state state forest? Forest of sorts. Forest of sorts, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you can only drive so far in. But, uh, yeah, no, we we do good this year. What I mean, city is it in? Atlanta. Yeah. Well, so, it's between three cities up there. It's Atlanta, Lewiston, and there was one other one that escapes me right now. Atlanta. Mainly Atlanta. <laughs> Atlanta is where they did the downtown thing. You know, you could, that was Lewiston. Uh, that was, was it? Yeah. Damn. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, so that was uh, – I mean, I would do it again. Probably skip a year or something, but that was definitely a worthwhile trip. I want to do... Uh, I want to drive it next year. <laughs> that would be sick. Um, yeah, maybe do like 100 Acre Wood or some other yeah. uh, New England or Susquehanna. I'd like to see like that a warm next. rally that, that, in between. Yeah. yeah, That'd be nice. So you, Mike and Will, still have their car. Kev, you, can you tell us what happened to yours? I was... after Actually, it was the weekend, or actually during the week... Uh, after we came back from Tale of the Dragon, I was on my way into work, taking my typical back roads because I'm tired of the highway traffic and all that stuff in the middle of winter. Um, and I'm sitting at a stop sign right next to a... Well, I'm teed up to a road that is two lanes going one way, two lanes going the other with a median in the middle. And a car across the way from me decided it was going to 
pull and go across the full four lanes as if it was continuing straight on the road I was on and a CRV coming down the road from around a corner which is pretty hard to see around um, managed to collide those two cars collided right in front of me the CRV bounced off and pretty much went straight into the end of the a pillar so like right in front of my driver's door um, the kneecaps right at the kneecaps yeah it, yeah <laughs> it banged the thing up pretty good like the roof was all bent up um, the whole door was caved in <laughs> the ignition that I had like reassembled <laughs> a few so, weeks before I, that. It's funny now because you're okay and everything, but I remember oh, in the video God. you were so upset about the ignition. You're like, <laughs> I spent so much time like figuring out how to take the key, the, the tumbler, out of the Audi and replace it with one that you could buy fairly cheap, but it's just so hard to get out. And I finally had the car turning on with a key because <laughs> the entire time I had been starting it with a screwdriver. <laughs> it doesn't so, look good. <laughs> no. no. And you, you get tired of like sitting there holding the tumbler and turning a screwdriver and the thing, whatever. But that like blew out of the hole. <laughs> it was sitting on the passenger side floorboard. So um yeah, that thing got totaled. Worked out pretty good as far as money wise because it was worth a decent amount. You can't find a running and driving Audi two hundred practically anywhere unless it's you know, pretty well maintained and people want a pretty good premium for that at this point so yeah what they offered you pretty low to start with and you kind of had a, had yeah, a had little glitch, bit. Yeah. one of those insurance games where they offer yeah. you almost nothing and then you, you have never to, take the first offer right but this was they more than doubled their offer yeah. after i gave them some examples yeah, of that worked out cars well. to replace it <clears throat> so i don't even think you needed to get into your maintenance records which you were tallying because yes. we were thinking we maybe at the end of this whole thing ever. we were going to check out and see like how everybody did and how much money everybody spent but you didn't even need to go there i ended up somewhere around 2500 bucks <laughs> yeah. in the car and i bought it for 900 if that says anything about <laughs> how much stuff you needed <laughs> yeah cheap cars <laughs> are cheap initially yeah but yeah that, that thing got pretty mangled the, the crv t-boned a fiat 500 so it's both pretty small cars but that's a 55 mile an hour zone and people don't go the speed limit so as the third car in the accident and how damaged it got it kind of speaks for how fast it was going and the fact that those other two people survived and everything was fine eventually was a very good sign but i had my doubts initially not a fun time at all you don't want to be in a car accident especially when you're just sitting at a stop stop sign waiting to turn on a road you're like i'm going to work i don't want to deal with anything right now i'm just sitting there boom happens so fast and you have no time to react to anything but so you bought another one this year can you tell us about that one i bought <laughs> i bought another winter beater right yes. and buy an audi 200 that's, that's what i meant um yeah we live in ohio so there's salt all the time here in winter and my truck which i was originally planning on driving through the winter it's pretty clean it's a second gen dodge that's pretty rare to find without rusted out rockers or bedsides and all that stuff and this is one example that had been oil sprayed and kept out of the salt pretty well its entire life so I decided I would probably just rather spend 1500 bucks on something and not get everything rusty so we talked about for a little while the Crown Vic series but it kind of <laughs> never really caught on but I was still kind of you gotta of try you gotta you be gotta like try. the first one you gotta bite the bullet and yeah. you're like all right i got mine <laughs> somebody had to do it and it's still pretty entertaining to drive for 1500 bucks i got a car with 90,000 miles on it that's a 2007 and of course immediately i had the issue of the classic cracked intake manifold so I had to replace that right away but other than that all i did was clean it and Breaks. put a limited slip in it Oh yeah, some rear brakes. That's it, really. Yeah, and it runs well. Incredible vehicles. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, more often than not, Crown Vics. I mean, they're they're fleet vehicles. They're maintained by like counties or states and things like that. Stuff usually gets taken care of reasonably. Yeah, it wasn't great. It wasn't terrible. Yeah. I bought it, but off for the price, someone I mean, that had it, bought it at an auction. It was also a fire 
chase car. It wasn't a police car. So even though the odometer doesn't work on it, or it works, it just doesn't light up. So I can't see how many hour, <laughs> idle hours it has. But I suspect it has lower idle hours than most Crown Vicks that were in service. And 90,000 miles, 1,500 bucks. Can't complain. I don't care about it. I let it rust. I let it get salty. I don't care if it gets dirty. It starts. It has great heat. I don't know if it has AC yet. We'll find out in summer. I probably won't even drive it in summer, honestly. I'll just park it on the side of the road and well, side of the house, whatever. Take the battery out and fire it up next winter, and I'm sure it'll run perfectly right away. What's next for you, Will? Uh, well, I am currently looking at selling one of my Mazdas that I've kind of lost interest in, and I really need a truck tow vehicle to facilitate more poor choices. So, yeah, you know, like we're all into doing the uh, little tiny quads and dirt bikes and things like that. So me hauling that stuff around in the back of a BMW wagon, it works. It's just not great. It seems like it's getting old. It's getting it's getting a little old. The BMW is getting a little more drift car. Yeah. It would be nice to turn it into like actually a real drift car, even though it's going to be a terrible drift car. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I think uh, that's first. And then once I have that, and eventually a trailer, then we'll start looking at the next project. So a lot a ways to go. Uh, you recently <laughs> purchased a scooter. Ooh, it's not can, just any not just any that? scooter. Okay. Yeah, well, this is I mean you this might is, we might need to leave them hanging on this okay. one. I think yeah. okay. this, this might this be is a work in progress. Gotcha. So yeah. we we have we have big plans this summer. So um, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, Some it's not things. just any scooter. So <laughs> all right, we'll leave I, it at that. <laughs> what's what's next for you? Uh, per usual, I'm in the middle of like ten things at once, um, and. Normally, I try to like only have one car part at a time, which that never works. But like it, it starts out great. Like I have my E34 uh, 5 Series that I pulled the motor out to build the drift car, because I had an LS pretty close to ready to going in, so it kind of like fast tracked that project a little bit. I'm in the middle of doing that now, but then I broke the 944, so I kind of want to fix that. Um, what else? The Dodge needs a couple things. The Audi's running crappy. So anything on Craigslist or Marketplace that you have your eye on? Well, I'm trying to join the scooter gang at the moment. <laughs> I'm in the hunt for a car trailer, and then yeah, I'm pretty limited on space. Otherwise, so I'm trying not to buy any more cars. Although it's really hard not to. Yeah. So motorcycles have been, or dirt bikes, and scooters have been the more the recent focus. We'll see how it goes. All right, final question. We're reaching close to an hour, so I, I want to wrap this up. But being a non-engineer, somewhat mechanical, not super mechanical, if I were to buy an uh, inexpensive car to tinker with, but I want it to be running, what would you buy? What what should I buy? What would you suggest I buy, Mike? It's going to take some, some shopping around. To, you got to kind of, like, see what's out there. It's going to be what options available mm -hmm. at the same time. But, like... BMWs are pretty good for that because they seem to always run, although they also always need something. There's always something wrong, but they always work. Um, so you can get into something like that, drive it around, ignoring some issues until you get around to them. Cross compatibility on the BMWs is really yeah, nice. Yeah, especially too. older ones. They, yeah. it, it is, the newer ones aren't bad either, but the older ones are like Legos. Like you can mix and match a lot of stuff. So they like to really cross over a yeah, lot if of. If you're not components. afraid of the pull aparts in the junkyards and stuff like that, you can get whatever it is you need. Right. So yeah, it's not a, lot a bad, of, not a lot bad of available option. things. And because they're expensive to fix, so everybody bails on them. So you can find things that have had work done that are broken that don't need much more. Fifteen hundred bucks, I could find something. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. For sure. An E36. Oh well, yeah. What yeah, is your E36? So what... E46. They're in that price range now. Um, I might say... find a really beat up E90. Yeah. They're, they're getting down there now, too. Like $2,000, you can find an E90 that needs a lot of stuff. But You all agree with the BMW? That's probably the best um, one? Or... I wouldn't say it's the best, but that would be where I'd look first. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've kind of just gravitated towards BMWs because they're rear-wheel drive, and I work at a place that I can buy parts for them fairly affordably. But Yeah, otherwise, is it still a good option? It, I mean... it is still a good option because you get a lot especially with the European cards, you get a lot for what you pay for them. 
Like, you can't go out and buy, you know, a Camaro or something and expect to get a V8 model that's something people want or that's something that's good to build on or fun to drive without spending a whole bunch of money because people want premiums for them. It's because the LS is God's gift to man. Some it's people the say that. motor ever created. It's, yeah. <laughs> no I feel like, you, you know, you just, they're, they're cheap. They're extremely cheap, and they were expensive, and that's yeah. for a reason. Yeah, it is. It is. It's insane. partially. It's mostly like how fast they depreciate. Yeah. yeah. Like. Yeah. I mean, look I at went, a seven series, brand new. Like an E thirty eight was like a hundred grand, and then within ten years you can buy them for three grand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was gonna and say a little, a little more than ten years. I mean, the E thirty nines we picked up, those were sixty five or so new. Right, which is just insane that we picked them up for six and seven hundred bucks. Right, like, we're dropping a zero. Off and the it's price and tag. it's and it's still to me very obvious very that they zeros. were well built, expensive cars to begin with. Like, just the quality of you know interior stuff, sound deadening, and like the way everything's put together. Like a lot of thought went into it. So much stuff is made out of aluminum. Like it's really nice. So it's really just a game of trying to get as much as you can out of mm-hmm. your money. Yeah. So I guess. My input on that matter, I mean, it's hard not to ask a lot of questions about what you're looking for, but I think it is, I would circle back to saying it's more about what kind of like falls into your lap. And I think all of us would say like, what's the weirdest thing you can get for as few dollars as possible? Like, I don't care if it runs, if it does, whatever, great. But like- Well, you said it has to run. So- It has to run. Yeah. Which, but it can't, I mean, come on, where do you draw the line? What if it runs, but doesn't drive? (laughs) <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, cause I mean, I'd be riding that line and saying, I mean, if it's cool enough and if you think that even if it doesn't run or even if it doesn't roll or drive with maybe just a few dollars, maybe just a little bit of TLC, you can get it there and have a cool, weird, cheap thing. Yeah. Definitely the weirdest, cheapest option is for sure the yeah. appeal for me at this point. As long as you're not afraid to dive in. Yeah. Right. Well, right. it forces you into it. Right. So. I don't think, like, I mean, whether it's Crown Vicks or BMWs or whatever, like, I think the best, by far, the best way to learn about cars, or even a car in particular, is just to buy one and get into it. Oh, yeah. I've long um, given up on, like, researching the car It's to so buy hard first. to do. Like, I mean, even when looking at something yeah. that I've thought about buying and, like, trying to read through the forums and trying to look at, like, some of the common problems, like, you're, the interest, like, isn't quite there. Like, right. you're not as dedicated to like sifting through all and the it makes garbage it harder and it doesn't really yeah. matter it's like oh yeah. i need the second to last year of the whatever yeah. and i don't care yeah. it's fine you yeah. can upgrade parts or whatever yeah, usually it's not that big of an issue pretty much screw it who cares what everybody thinks buy what you want right jump in yep no. solid advice all right guys first episode of cad to cars cad to cars, cad to cars yeah. in uh, the bag Great job. All right. Tune in next week for another one. Yep. Thank you. All right. Thanks.